First John, way in the back of your Bible, Little John, I like to call him, Little John, chapter 3, verse 8, says this on the second part, part B, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So here's the question. If Jesus was manifested in the flesh, on the earth, God in the flesh, and his purpose, one of his purposes, was to destroy the works of the devil, then how come the devil is still causing trouble on planet earth? Well, it's because the devil is an outlaw. He's been declared illegal by Jesus. The keys that he had, the keys that he had, that he took from Adam, the keys of authority in the earth. You remember if you looked in 2 Corinthians any time in your life, it's a powerful book, it says that the devil is the god of this world, of the earth, little g. God is God over all, the Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. He's Lord over all, but the devil stole, he, he deceived Adam and took the keys of authority to planet earth, not to heaven, but to planet earth. He had them for all those years. Jesus was manifested to take away the keys from the devil. And he gave them to us. And here's the problem. We have not been using our authority. So the devil is still causing all kinds of trouble. And by the way, the devil is responsible for every single problem that exists on planet Earth. If it's, if it's stealing or killing or destroying, it's the devil. Sometimes I keep on saying this to you because some Christians have this whole thing mixed up. It's very plain in John 10, 10. Stealing, killing, and destroying is of the devil. But, Jesus said, Jesus said, I have come to give you life. The opposite of stealing, killing, and destroying. I came to give you life and life more abundantly. So it's our job to enforce. It's just like police officers. Their job is to enforce a law that's already on the books. It's already written in the books of heaven that the devil is defeated. He's, he's been destroyed. His works have been destroyed, defeated. We have to go out and arrest him. We have to enforce our authority. Bind the devil. Loose the angels of God. Bind the devil. Divide, bind his works. Now why do you think it is that that most Christians don't do what they can do <laughs> about binding the devil. Number one is they've been taught wrong. Let's just be honest about it and put it out there in the open. A, a lot of people are still teaching wrong things. Things that are not in the Bible. One favorite thing, I'll just get off on a little trail here. One favorite thing that that uh, a lot of people like to like to use that is not written in the Bible. They like to when I say, "Well, the devil is the one who steals, kills, and destroys," and then I'll say, "But God allowed it." That's a poor excuse. Let me tell you why. What if I came in this morning, or let's not use me, let's use some other guy. Some other guy came walking into church and. And uh, he confessed to us that, that uh, he got drunk last night and beat his wife. But God allowed it. What would you say? Boo. <laughs> God did not 
do anything. He's not responsible whatsoever. Don't you dare say God allowed that. You did that. You sinned before God. Isn't that right? God allows whatever we allow. Can you see that? Because we've been given a free will. Listen, let's, let's go back to Adam. Adam was told, Adam, you have dominion. You're in charge of the earth. At that time, right, in the garden, he was in charge of the earth. He could name the animals. He was in, God gave him authority. In other words, it would be just like God saying, in my name you can command the animals and the fish and the birds and everything that exists on planet earth. You take dominion. You have authority. And he told Adam, but don't eat off of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't do it. But God allowed him to do it, didn't he? Because he allows free choice. So don't say God allowed it. Matter of fact, Adam tried to pull that on God. God said, Adam, what's happening here? And he said, that woman that you gave me. See, he tried to say, the woman allowed it and you would allowed it. And I was just an innocent bystander. No, no. The word of God says, Adam, you were standing right next to Eve. You weren't out in the field somewhere. You were standing right there. To, should have taken authority, just like we should take our authority right now in our lives. No excuses. No, no this and that about God allowed this. That's not true. If God said, this is my will, my will is that you do not eat off of that tree of knowledge of good and evil, and everything will be perfect. Adam disobeyed. I'll tell you what, it's real simple. If you read the Bible, if you want to be abundantly blessed, live a blessed life, an abundant life, all walking in the spirit, walking by faith. There's only two things you have to do. Pray and obey. That's it. It's so simple. And, and here's, here's something that happens to us. Number one, we don't know about our authority. Some Christians don't know about the goodness of God. Don't know that we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. We have the word of God that can be spoken just like Jesus spoke to the devil and said, it is written. And, and basically commanded the devil to go away. Some people don't know. They honestly don't know. And others know because they've heard the preaching and the teaching. But when they do hear the preaching and teaching... They have no intentions of doing it. <laughs> so there's a, there's a big difference. Some people are ignorant. Some people know. But they have no intentions of doing the word of God. Somebody say amen. Because it's so simple. I didn't say it was easy. It's just simple to understand. So let's turn to. Luke chapter 10. And we'll continue this a little bit. You see, the, the devil tries to trick us. And Jesus said this himself. He said, listen, some people come and they hear the word of God, but they don't do the word of God. And they're, they're like, let me show you what they would be like. They would be like a man who built his house built a nice, beautiful house on the sand. No firm foundation. So when the storms of life come rolling in, great is its fall. Great is the destruction of his home. Because he didn't build his home the way God told him. 
And then he said others would be like a man who hears the word of God. He comes to the church. He intends to do what he hears, obey the word of God. He is a doer of the word. I'll show you what he is like. He is like a man who built his house on a rock. And when the storms of life come rolling in and beat upon that house, it will not fall. That's the story of your authority, your choices that you make in life. And see, if you know the word of God, the Bible, let me say it like this. To have real revelation knowledge of God's word. It's supposed to be experiential. Knowledge in the Bible is an experience. If knowledge to you is just to hear, well, yeah, I love that message. Wow, I'm going to buy the tape. Or you can say, wow, I got to listen to that again so that I know what to do tomorrow. See, if, you, if you're just the one who wants to hear it, have your ears tickled, then it's just plain old information. That's all it is. Knowledge, according to the Bible, is experiential. It's a working knowledge. If you hear the word of God, then do the word of God. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. This is awesome. This is actually prophetic, but it's actually Old Testament authority that Jesus was talking about at the same time. Behold. You know what the behold, the word behold means? Take a look. Look at this. Give your attention to this. That's what Jesus was saying. Give your attention to this. I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. You know what this verse is saying here? You have an enemy. He's out to steal from you, to destroy you, and to kill you. The devil is out to do that. He's a, he's a roaring, he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Who, may, who is he going to devour? The ones who are hearers only and not doers of the word of God. Amen. I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Do, do you see what Jesus is calling the enemy, your enemy? Something ugly. A serpent. A scorpion. He's rotten to the core. We shouldn't let him off the hook. You know what he wants to be off the hook? He wants you to think, God is your problem. He wants you to think God is putting you through this to make you stronger. The Bible doesn't say that. You go, you fall into different trials and temptations of the devil and it works patience. And patience is a good thing because through patience and faith you inherit all the promises of God. And all the promises of God are in Christ. Yes and amen. Not maybe. <laughs> we have developed in our Christian world some real good excuses. And actually, if you want to know the truth, they're devil inspired. If it doesn't come from the word of God, the spirit of God himself, it's a deception of the devil. It's a religious tradition. And what did Jesus say about traditions? They will nullify the word of God. They'll cancel out. You're standing on the word of God, and all of a sudden you say something like, well, you know, all things work together for good to those who love God. You mean drug addiction, killing babies, Nuclear attacks? You think all those are working for your good? No, they're going to wipe you out. <laughs> That's not really funny, but Christians have fallen for this. If you read your Bible, all things 
are not all things. It's not all things like, like somebody that attends our church service. He goes out in the parking lot and he's selling drugs to all the parishioners. No, that's not working for our good. Not the evil things designed by the devil are not working for our good. It's prayer. If you read Romans chapter 8. Read it in context. All things are all the things God has given us. The name of Jesus. The word of God. Angels to surround us and protect us. All the things that God is responsible for. Forgiving us. Blessing from above. Favor. This is all God. Not all things. <laughs> all things in the context of what he was talking about. Praying in the Holy Ghost according to the will of God. That's how the Holy Spirit inspires you to pray. That's how the, the Holy Spirit gives you the utterance to pray is according to the will of God. Is anybody with me today? Amen. You've gone home. It's real simple in the Bible. The devil is bad and God is good. Don't blame God for something that the devil does. The devil loves it when people talk about that. Well, God, you know, God might have had a, a good reason for you having that terrible accident and laying up in the hospital for six weeks. No. no, no, no that's not God the Father who loved us so much that he sent his only son to die for us. That's not our loving father. No. See, there's a dividing line in the Bible if you want to know. Old covenant before Jesus went to the cross and the new covenant. In the old covenant, people were rewarded or punished for their sin or their good, th good deeds. They were judged, in other words. But when Jesus came and hung on the cross... He was judged for my sin and your sin. He took upon himself your sin and my sin. He was judged who never knew sin. He never, he never committed any sin. He took upon himself our sin. And the Bible says once and for all. The wrath of God was poured out on Jesus. Some people want to say, well, you know, the, God visited that town last night with a tornado, killed 16 people because he judged. No, all of the sin, I, I heard Jesse Duplantis say this one time after there was that big hurricane in, in uh, Louisiana. And... Uh, a lot of people, a lot of ministers were on television saying that God was judging Louisiana because they have those Mardi Gras and, and all those uh, wild parties and stuff. And, and Jesse came on television. He says, well, if that was God judging Louisiana, he missed the wor worst parts. <laughs> There's more <laughs> sinful places that got missed. No, God did not send the, the hurricane. Even Isaiah told us that. In the Old Testament, he, it was like, like a prophecy. He said, the wind came, but God was not in the wind. A tornado came, but God was not in the tornado. It was pretty plain. No, God is not sending judgment for sin. Not yet, anyway. This isn't the great tribulation. No, right now, we're under grace. We're under the love of God. Where the love of God is perfected, all fear has to go. Praise the Lord. We see a lot of teaching sometimes makes you afraid of God. I've heard people say this before. Don't pray for patience because God will send it to you. <laughs> He'll send trouble your way to give you more patience. God does not do that. Somebody made that up. Show me chapter and verse. <laughs> it's not in there. It's not in there. 
I wouldn't listen. I, I'll tell you what. Let me go out on a limb here and say something to you. <laughs> like I've never done that before, right? Watching Christian television is 50-50. 50% will build up your faith, and 50% of it will give you unbelief. And I'm not taking it back either. I'm telling you, you just can't, just because somebody says, I'm a Christian. Did you ever, did you ever see a bumper sticker that says, you know, I'm a Christian? And you watch the way they are driving? <laughs> really? <laughs> Follow me to church. Thank you, no thank you. <laughs> But it, it, it's just, it's amazing to me. I would rather, let me say something else that'll kind of rock your socks. I would rather have you watch old reruns from NCIS than to have you watch some of the Christian stations out there. Did I make it plain enough for you? You, you can't listen to every voice. You're only supposed to follow one voice, and that is a voice inspired by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit teaches us the Word of God. It is written. It is written. God is a good God. Amen. Behold, back to Luke 10, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. The devil is a liar and over all the power of the enemy. Or you could say it like this, that word power there in the King James, uh, when I give you power, the King James says, but in the Greek it says I give you authority. In the King James it says over all the power of the enemy. But what that really means is, if you look it up in the Greek, that power means ability. Over all the ability of the, of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's the will of God. The will of God is not that you be hurt and broken. No, he wants you to be blessed. And he knows it's hard. He knows it's hard. That's why he said all those times, like in Hebrews, he said, hold fast your confession of faith. Hold fast to the promise of God. Hold fast because the devil is trying to take away what you think you know about the word of God. He's trying to deceive you. Some Christians are deceived. And you, you know, the very definition of being deceived is a person who doesn't know he's deceived. That's the very definition. Most Christians are innocent. They don't really know they're deceived. That's why they argue and fight so much against the most powerful things that are written in the Word of God. Like the Holy Spirit of God who's given to us like a river of living water. The Holy Spirit is supposed to help you minister to other people. That's why it's so important. You should wake up every morning and start out right. Because if you don't start out right, you'll end up wrong. If you start out your day and you start out by praying, let your spirit pray. The Apostle Paul said, if any man prays in another tongue, his spirit is praying. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Your spirit will pray. How many Christians have never had their spirit pray? They've prayed with their own understanding instead of letting their spirit pray, which is where the power is. I'll tell you what, if you spent time praying in the Spirit, praying in English, praying in the Spirit, singing in English and singing in the Spirit, confessing the Word of God, spend your time there, confess your sin if you have to, you won't sin nearly as much. But I'll tell you, I can, I can tell you by, by my own witness, if you don't, 
It's not a benefit to you. If you neglect your prayer time, if you neglect confessing who you are in Christ and who he is in you, if you neglect that, you'll end up being a grouch, trying to get even with somebody who did you wrong. You'll go against obeying the word of God. But if you stay in the spirit, that's what the Bible says in Galatians. It says, walk in the spirit so that you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Your sin wants, your, <laughs> your sin wants the flesh. <laughs> no, your flesh wants to sin. But if you keep your flesh under by walking in the spirit, you will overcome the flesh and its desire. And flesh in the word of God doesn't mean just your body. It means your thinking also. You won't think right if you don't start out right. You think on the Lord. A man whose mind is stayed upon the Lord walks in peace, the Bible says. God will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. And as soon as you get out of that, you won't be walking in peace, but you'll be an old grouch. You won't be a good witness for the Lord because you're not full of joy. The devil has stolen your joy by deceiving you. And you, you wake up and you say, well, I prayed yesterday. I confessed the word yesterday. Or for some Christians, last year. <laughs> or last... <laughs> whatever the devil can you're easily deceived easily because you'll think you're right well I go to church I went to church I heard the word but you were you a doer of the word because the word says confess if you confess the Lord Jesus then Jesus will confess you before God the Father and all the angels confess the word of God so that you're reminded. Your mind is renewed. That's why you confess who you are in Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You confess that every day because you're renewing your mind to the will of God. If you're, if you're a Christian and you've lost your joy and you're walking around all hunched over and depressed and it, not medically I'm not talking about but just just down in the dumps all the time the devil has stolen your joy and you know how he did it he deceived you into thinking <laughs> you don't need to pray you don't need to obey <laughs> you're good to go you are good to go you're going to heaven but do you want to defeat the power of the enemy? Do you want to put him down? I'll tell you this little, little story a little bit here. You've probably seen it, I have, <clears throat> where some guy, like maybe like the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the video we just saw, some guy's got this big tattoo. It says, born to raise hell. You ever seen that? Well, the, the, the problem with that, I'm not talking against tattoos right there at, at this moment. I'm talking about born to raise hell because the whole world is under the sway of the devil. And when you say you were born to raise, raise means to lift up, to build up hell, promote hell. That's what they're doing. If you're, if you're going that way, which is the opposite way of walking in the will of God, you're building up hell. You're raising hell. But there's another kind of raise, and I want to talk to you about this one. Born to raise hell. R-A-Z-E. -E. Come on, say that after me. R-A-Z-E. -E. Say it. R-A-Z-E, -E, I want you to get the right one. Raise means to tear down. Look it up in the dictionary. Cast out, pull down strongholds, destroy. 
Use your authority. You were born again to raise hell. R-A-Z-E. Yeah. Born again to come against hell. Not to go along with every religious saying and every religious tradition, but you were born to be a conqueror, an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Overcoming, not overcoming people. No, we are sent to minister to people, but we're born to raise, R-A-Z-E, hell and everything that it represents. Amen. Amen. Because you've got the Holy Spirit. If you're submitted to the Holy Spirit of God and you know that you're empowered, you see, some people have information about that. Yes, I know. Pastor Ron, I know I've been empowered. I've, Jesus said, if I stay here and receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, I will receive power. To be a witness for Jesus. I know the Bible says that. But I'm just me. I'm nobody. That's the devil lying to you. Just like he did to the people that the Apostle Paul was talking to. The Corinthian church. The Ephesus church. The Galatian church. He, he looked at some of them and said... You are acting like mere men. You are not just an ordinary man, an ordinary woman. You see, when Jesus talked in Luke 10 here, he was talking to the disciples, right? The apostles. And so the, the, it went right along with the Old Testament prophets. And the Old Testament priests and kings. Sometimes they were anointed with the Holy Spirit. And sometimes they were not. Isn't that correct? Jesus right here in this, in this scripture. He's talking to them. Especially right now. I'm sending you forth with the power and authority. I'm giving you to tread on serpents and scorpions. But. He was also prophesying at the same time to all those who would be, all, all those that the Holy Spirit would pour out on all flesh. Prophesying. Every child of God is able to take authority, bind the devil, loose the angels, bind evil spirits, and loose freedom in Christ on other people. Every child of God has been anointed, empowered, given the power of the Holy Spirit to do those things. To do the works of Jesus. Can you say amen to that? See, the only reason that you're not walking in that is because the devil has deceived you into thinking it was only for the pastor or the prophet. Or, the, or those disciples. You see, the devil lied to the church saying, when, when the disciples passed away, the apostles passed away, power passed away. Miracles passed away. That's the lie of the devil. Doctrines of demons. is That's what it is. Because Jesus, who is God, is the same yesterday, today, and... How much? Forever. God is not taking away his gifts. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. They haven't passed away. I know some, some people use the scripture that someday tongues will pass away. <clears throat> but they stop reading too soon. That's like... Uh, I saw that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie one time. He said, you move too soon. Nobody saw it? Good. Okay. <laughs> but the, the, see, the devil would like to have you think. And he's deceived the church. On, there are people on TV preaching this stuff. 
that it's all passed away. Not every Sunday, not every weekday, they're not preaching it. But if you look up their website, some of them will tell you exactly what they believe. I, I do it all the time. I look up people. Some people, I, I looked up this one guy who was on television. You have watched him. I know you have because I have. But I looked up his website and he said it's forbidden, listen close, it's forbidden to speak in tongues in the sanctuary. And I thought, didn't the Apostle Paul write something about that? Didn't he say, forbid not to speak in tongues? <laughs> well, and the, and the same person says, we believe the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, <laughs> except for some parts. <laughs> They didn't put that in there, but I, I, I always do that. I look at my Bible and I think, did you guys cut that out? Did you cut that one out? No, th see, the Bible says that tongues will pass away when we see Jesus face to face. It says, when that which is perfect comes, and a lot of people will teach that, and they say, that which is perfect is the Bible. Now we have the Bible, so we don't need miracles and healings. But they stop too soon again. The Bible says, tongues will pass away when that which is perfect comes and we see Jesus face to face. Jesus has not come in the clouds yet. That's when things we won't need that because we'll have Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He'll be ruling planet Earth. Praise the Lord. Okay, now that I've got the introduction done. Okay, come on, let's all stand. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for your spirit. We thank you that we are empowered. Come on, everybody say, I am empowered. Thank you, Lord God, that we have the anointing. We are anointed because Christ is the anointed one. And we are in Christ and he's in us. We thank you so much for that, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, you say amen.